Hey, this is Trey Alexander, uh, hanging out with the director of the very non-traditional horror slash sci-fi uh, slash, or or slash ish, ish. <laughs> everything film, Joseph Kahn. Um, uh, I'm uh, I'm curious how you would describe this film. Um, I describe it as a teenage movie for actual teenagers today. Okay. Um, and it's a mixed, uh, mashed up genre film, but you know, um, I, I, what I, what I really think of it as is, um, it's like a genuine teenager film uh, for a modern generation, um, not using the rules of the older generation. You know, that, you know, that's very interesting, you know, and, and did something that just, you know, kind of bo popped into my head, uh, when you were saying that was, you know, people just, uh, throw in the idea of, you know, Back to the Future and, and Breakfast Club in this film, and your cast probably wasn't even no. born. No. Uh, my cast was not born uh, during the 80s films. And, you know, the funny thing is that people always go, oh, this is an 80s film. It's, it's not an 80s film. It's a 90s film. <laughs> it's a retro 90s film because, you know, say like in 1992, uh, you, know, an eight, you know, someone that's 18 years old wasn't even born then, you know? <laughs> so, right. So the 90s are, are like their 80s for a lot of other generation, you know, or, or their 70s and stuff like that. So this is, the, this is like the first real retro film for teenagers today. And, and see, I dig that, you know, that, that being such a horror fan, um, I, I dig kind of going back to, lack of a better word, old school. Now, now were, you, uh, uh, were you a fan of, of this genre? You know, uh, you know I, 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 I love... I'm, I'm, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I, I just ran out of shirts. <laughs> 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 I'm out on the road. <laughs> but um, I, I'll say I, I love all genres of movies and stuff like that. I wouldn't pick one particular genre like horror as my favorite. In fact, the, the film really isn't a horror film. It I've isn't. Heard you describe it that way. Yeah, it's kind of indescribable uh, on a certain level because it's such a mashed up film. But um, I, I would say that like it's a love of all type of genres. But more importantly, I'm using genres as a metaphor because it's really about the teen experience. Like if you're in high school, remember uh, one of the reasons why there's so many horror films about high school is because as a teenager, you know, because you've only lived 16, 17, 18 years of life. If you break up with your boyfriend and your first boyfriend or girlfriend, it's the worst thing that's ever happened to you, you know? If you get an F, it looks like your entire life is going to fall apart, you know? And, and, you know, quite frankly, for some people, it might. You know, right. it's, it's really bad stuff, right? Right, right. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, it, it, there's also this sort of thing of how do you interact in, a, in this sort of microcosm, this intense period where, like, you're discovering yourself and you're you're being put into different cliques. Are you a stoner? Are you a nerd? Right. You know, are you emo? You know, right. are you popular? Are you not? You know, it's like, and you're being forced into this little world. It's like, it's like very few pieces in the planet are you ever forced with that many random people to somehow survive. It's Darwinian, you know? So that's why horror is a great sort of way to uh, express uh, high school. So is comedy, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, really a lot of genres. So, uh, you know, what I thought I would do is to take all these different genres and almost separate them into cliques. There's cliques of genres going on in high school. Mash them together and have them fight, and that's detention. Wow, I didn't even. You know what? It when you put it like that, it just makes my head spin. Which is what people describe that have seen the film. They say, you know what? I got to go back and see it multiple times because I think I missed some things. So that's got to be kind of cool when you hear that. Yeah, and you know, there's also something to be said about uh, multiple viewings of a movie too, because I think that the way movies are processed today are very, very different than the way they're processed, like say, 15, 20 years ago. Kids today, like, already live in a world where Blu-ray, DVD, and all that is is just part of their fabric. They understand that this is like. Remember, like, like someone who was growing up in the 80s, the entire concept of VHS and rentals was a new thing right. they, they had to learn how to think of movies that way today it's like you know you know that the movies will exist forever so this movie specifically is made not to be watched once but multiple times and as you watch it you'll learn new things every single time um, it's like any other piece of thing I, I almost think of it almost like a piece of music you know um, like if you've ever listened to music for the first time, mm -hmm. and I'm being being a music video director, right. I've experienced this many many times. I almost inevitably what inevitably happens is the first time you hear a track, and it's new, um, you don't you don't like it, you know because it's new, right? It, it, because it's Darwinian. You know why? Because as human beings, we're animals, and we have this sort of evolutionary uh, like like uh, self defense mechanism. If if something is out of place and new, like it's a fight or flight thing. Like is that chair there? Well, no, it's not there. It's over here. Like the, you're, you're, you know, like you're, you're just constantly aware of stuff like that. So whenever something gets rearranged in the room, you're like, 
it, it freaks you out. If, if the music comes in, it's like all these weird new sounds and stuff like that. At first, your reaction isn't, oh, this is great. You're at first going, what is it? What am I listening to? That's going to be detention at the first time you see it. You're going to be like, oh my god, this is so strange, and everything's re uh, uh, rearranged in a different way, and all your Darwinian instincts are going to be going, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. But then after you watch it, you're like, oh wait, this is good. And I heard a lot of people, and they go watch it the second time, they're like, okay, now I love it, you know? Because you're relaxed, and you, you, you got into the groove of it, and stuff like that. And that's the way the films are done. That's cool, man. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny, I, I felt that way about a, a movie called Donnie Darko, mm -hmm. um, and they described, I had someone describe your film as Donnie Darko on speed. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. That was one of those where you got to go back and watch, and, because it's maybe a different experience each time. Yeah, it, it's definitely going to be a different experience every time you watch Detention, for sure, because you'll read a lot of new things once you know uh, what the movie's about. Now, um, Movies, the movie's uh, a smaller film. Doesn't I didn't have a big budget. Obviously, there's, I'm gonna guess that it's limited as far as trying uh, get, to get the word out there uh, on an advertising standpoint. But now we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter. You know how important that is that you know for for smaller films like this. Oh, I mean, uh, social networking and the internet is incredibly important for a movie like this. You know, I don't think it was like for uh, m uh, the stars and my you know like Twitters and you know Facebooks and stuff. Um, people wouldn't know about this movie. You know? it, 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 does it help now that, uh, or is it kind of a coup for you that you know uh, Josh Hutchinson was uh, in you know a, a very high-profile movie like The Kids Are All Right? Yeah, when I casted Josh, you know he had just done that movie. No one knew it was gonna blow up like that. And uh, and yeah, it was it was an incredible boon for us. You know, like essentially we were making a no-star movie, uh, and then I got Dane on board, and then Josh blew up, and so I'm. It's great. It's great for the movie. Now, you and Dane had worked together. Um, was it uh, was it a, was it a hard sell to get Dane involved in this one, or was it just one of these things where he wanted to work? You know, you guys wanted to work together again. Hey, man, I put Dane in Torque uh, like before <laughs> anybody knew who he was. You know, people in L.A. knew who he was. That's right. why I put him in. But uh, but the uh, but the rest of the world didn't know. So he owed me a favor. Thanks, Dane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now between when you did uh, Torque, which was about. Was about seven years ago, eight years ago. I actually shot it nine years ago. Okay, okay. So what have you learned between that one and this one? What have I learned between that one and this one? I mean, I'm I'm nine years smarter as a filmmaker. Okay. You know, I've done nine more years of commercials and music videos and studying films and uh, nine more years of growing up as a as a human being. I, I think the most important thing on a certain level is just my maturity level has gotten better because I've had nine more years of life, and that changes because as much as I've kept learning more technical things and more. More, and I, when I say technical, it's everything from camera work to storytelling to plot points and things like that. But the most important thing as a filmmaker is you've got to have stories to tell. And nine more years of life really gives you more perspective on human beings. So when I made this movie, you know, it, to get to the fun of it, I really wanted to make sure that we got underneath the, the surface of the characters a little bit more. Because it, it's, it's ultimately, it's, it's a fun movie. Uh, but it's fun because you love these characters. Right. And that's the nine years difference. Well, congratulations on the movie, man. There's a lot of good buzz on there uh, about it. Uh, director Joseph Kahn, this is called Detention. Go see it.